I want to show a very quick way that we can make a maze for a children's activity project. Uh, mazes are a lot of fun for kids to do because it, it, it gives them a chance to concentrate on what they're trying to solve. It gives them a sense of accomplishment when they get through. It's kind of it teases them with a, a few little frustrations and, and so it's, a, it's just a lot of fun for for kids. So I'm going to do a quick maze here. I'm going to work in Adobe Illustrator, but you can do this in by hand, following the same principles, or you can do it in any other software that seems to work well for you. But one of the first things that we need to think about when we're creating a maze is it has to have accurate paths. And by that I mean I've seen some mazes where some of the paths are really thin, some are thick, some of the the entranceways get, get really kind of tight, and that's visually frustrating because you're not sure if you're supposed to be going in a way or not, uh, and it can actually make for just a messy maze. The other thing that a maze has to have is a good real solution. You have to be able to get through it. I've seen people try to put together a maze and, they, and they're just doing it from scratch and then when they get all finished they've made all their paths and things in there they, they realize that there's no no real way to get all the way through because they've accidentally closed off uh, a way to get through the maze the other thing that I think makes a maze a whole lot of fun is if you have some sort of motive or a goal that you can uh, get the get the kid or whomever is trying to complete the maze to feel like they're like they're doing this for a reason it's not just okay get from here to here but is there a reason that we want to entice the the person to go through the maze so the first things we want to do is uh, determine the size of your maze and working in, in Adobe Illustrator it's really simple we can create a series of uh, horizontal lines and you want to make sure that you keep these evenly spaced. You want to make them just as perfectly evenly spaced this way as you can. So maybe this is the height of my maze and then I'm going to term, determine the width of my maze. And this is completely up to you. I mean it can be different shapes, it could be uh, different dimensions for yours. For my demo I'm just going to do it. It's not perfectly square but it's kind of fairly square here. So I've just drawn out this little grid and this is going to serve, serve as the uh, the parameters of the, the area for my maze. The next thing you want to do is I feel create the solution meaning we're going to create a way that we can get through this maze and have it have it be uh, able to be solved and the way I do that is I'll just Go ahead and draw a really heavy thick line and I'm going to try to make it a little bit convoluted in here, a little bit difficult to uh, work your way through so it's not perfectly obvious on the path that we're going to follow. Now the reason we're doing this at this point is we want to make sure as we're creating our, our paths and, and, the, and the blockages in here that we don't accidentally cross any of these lines that are going to create my solution. Okay, so if I make sure that I've created this whole maze and this is open like this all along this red line, then I know it can be solved. The next thing uh, I would probably do is I'm going to create my frame around the maze like this. So now I know exactly where I'm, I'm going to be working. And, you know, if you do good thick lines like this. Your, your maze might not be this thick, but it's for uh, clarity. You can see exactly what I'm doing. But I think if you have fairly good strong lines, it's easy for a kid to kind of color along this with a crayon or something and be able to find their way. All right, so now that I'm doing this, what I'm going to be doing is creating all kinds of pathways. And if I just take my pen tool over here, Right, I can start to click and create paths in here. So if I create a line like this, for instance, you know, and I 
make my make my stroke nice and big and thick. You can see I, I can create paths like that. Okay. And I'm just gonna as I'm doing that, I'm gonna make sure that none of my paths are gonna cross this red line. That's the most important thing that we're gonna do here. So I've gone ahead and done my paths here just to speed this video up for you so you can see what we're doing. And I've created this series of paths. And one of the things I was trying to be really conscious of as I was doing it is that they feel fairly even. They feel uh, like there's not like one section where it's, there's a lot of real dense lines and, and, uh, and channels to be going through and some that are too open. So you try to create a, a nice even sense of, of this, this pathway. The other thing I'm trying to do is make sure that there are some red herrings in here for uh, the person solving the puzzle could follow. So if they're following down along this way and they go around here, uh-oh, they run into these roadblocks. They can't get through. Or if they come around this way, right, they're going to walk around and they're going to get stuck. So these are the things that are going to make a maze fun if we have these, these little ways that we could follow that don't take us anywhere. Um, and then we have to backtrack and kind of find our way through. So once I've got this set up, and if I hide my grid that I had, had determined, right, I have this, and if I hide the solution, I'm going to end up with a nice evenly spaced, even channeled maze. And it, it, it looks good, right? And if you glance at it, there's no obvious solution to it. Uh, as you begin to follow through, you can you can figure out your way through, but just glancing at it, it's not it's not perfectly obvious. Sometimes a maze you can just look at it and you say, oh well, I know I know exactly where I'm supposed to be going, and so it's not it's not any fun. So we want to make sure that it, it is a little convoluted, a little bit of a challenge, but not too much because if it's impossible to solve, then that's just completely frustrating. I'll say now, once I have this, I want to think about um, creating a motive for my maze, um, and it could be it could be anything, you know. But you're trying to get your audience to say, okay, I'm I have to get from this point to this point because of why. What's my reason to get through here? So you could come up with all kinds of characters, and particularly if if you're doing a maze that's along a theme. You know, you could have all kinds of things. So in this instance, I'm going to put a couple of characters in here, right? So I've got a caterpillar that I've drawn and a leaf. And so in this instance, I might write up here, help the caterpillar find his way to the leaf because he's got to eat, right? So now we know this guy's going to come on down through here. It also shows us exactly where the start is and where the finish is. So we know we're supposed to start up here. We're going to work our way through and end up down at the very bottom down here. Now here's our solution again. All right, so it's completely solvable. We can follow this path and we will get the caterpillar to the leaf. But when we take that away, it's, it's not perfectly obvious. So a person could come around this way and if they go this, they get stuck. They can come here and get stuck. They might work their way around this way and get stuck. So that's kind of fun. It's a really good, clean, easy way to create a, uh, a maze. Now you could do this exact same thing uh, with a Sharpie and draw it by hand and then just scan it and place it into your thing. If you want the whole thing to have a really, really hand-drawn, natural feel, but following this, this method, your paths will, even if they're hand-drawn, if you're following our grid, our paths will be evenly spaced, they're going to be uh, uniform, and you're going to follow your, your size parameters that you've set out for yourself. So that's my idea for, for creating your maze, and I, I hope that 